most of that was all correct. Um, I'm not sure exactly who you're listening to that says it wasn't. Um, we obviously see that Maricopa County um, is trying to tell everybody that they had absolutely no problems and it was absolutely perfect. I think that one thing that we have found is that nothing is perfect and if we can find ways to improve, that's what we're going to do. This is why we've turned everything over to our Attorney General, Mark Brnovich, asking him to open up an investigation. And what we would like him to do is um, to please take all of these reports, take all this information and verify it. He, um, he has the ability to get experts, he has the ability to do canvassing if he wants or, um, or, or just double check everything with cybersecurity people. Give it to him, let him verify it. Then we'll see what he says. No, I think he needs to look at everything that's in there. Obviously, some things are more important than other things, Dennis. Um, you know, we're wondering why there were duplicate ballots that were marked duplicate on the outside of the box, but they did not have coinciding numbers on them with the originals because it's difficult for anybody to ascertain if they're really duplicates or not. I certainly would like to have him check into the fact that somebody logged on and there were over 30, 37,000 entries that were done very quickly in a very short period of time, which uh, ended up making the logs roll over and deleted some of the data from the very beginning because it overrode the original things. So there's some questions in there that just aren't making sense, and I'd like him to look into them. But Who's understand the if the auditors in all of these months could not find actual answers to these questions, what makes you think the Attorney General is going to do any better? Okay, well, first of all, part of the reasons why they couldn't get all the answers is because Maricopa County would not turn us over much of the information. They would not cooperate. For, you, for those of you who don't know, when we first started this, I asked them to do this with us. I asked them to do it jointly. They originally said they wanted to do with it, us, with it, us with it jointly, but then consequently backed down and said, no, we don't want to. I don't know why that was, other than I know they got some legal advice, so I can only assume that you know, maybe they didn't want to hear what an audit would do. I hope that's not the case. But the reality is, is that's why it took so long. Not only did we not get the information we needed, we had to keep going back to court. They sued us. And then on top of that, we had people from all over the place suing us every week. So it's amazing we got where we, what we did at this point. Where do you, where do you hope that you have said that they would be submitted to them? I assume that that's probably in January when the legislature reconvened. Okay, as far as the Senate body, um, our job is to set policy. So our Senate, uh, Senator Peterson that was up there with me today, he is the chair of the Judiciary Committee. Um, we also have a Government Elections Committee. Um, those committees are, you know, talking about calling uh, immediate special committee meetings so they can start going over all of this information and start drafting legislation so we can get it done as quickly as possible. It, whenever they want to, and then the question is about how quickly we can get this done. If there are some things that we can specifically get done that is reasonable, that we know we've got the votes on, we'll reach out to our governor and say, would you mind calling a special session? At least get us these basic things in place um, before the next elections. Um, we're pretty sure that some of the election things that need to be done, uh, the other side of the aisle, um, they have fought this all the way, so they're probably not going to jump right in and say, yeah, we'll vote for a special session. But we're hoping there's some good common ground that we can find here and at least get started on that. Well, have you been invited to any hearings and reviews for the government committees? I know we have just been having problems with the county, but there's a lot of unanswered questions with those Dr. Fever coming out here. I'm sure there's an explanation for that. Will they be given a chance to explain themselves? Mary Jo, we have invited them all the way along. Uh, the truth is, is that even when we had that interim hearing in July, if you remember that correctly, 
Uh, one of the reasons we did is because we kept asking them, come on guys, help us. Just sit down with us and answer our questions. Two and two is not adding up to four. Maybe there's a logical explanation. explanation. Could you please just sit down with us and, and explain it? And they've said no every time, every single time. To the extent is that we even gave them information from this draft and asked them if there was any input that they would like to give us before the hearing or would talk about it, and, they w and we were told no, but they've already got their responses all ready to put out on Twitter. So does that mean that they would be invited? They're always invited. They're, yes, they're always invited. Barbara? Thank you. Um, a lot, you know, people are still talking out there about fraud. Fraud has been the buzzword. Oh, we're going to find fraud. We're going to find fraud. Nobody mentioned it here. So how do you establish those bases? How do you set the record straight that apparently fraud is not the issue? What do you tell folks out there, tell them to your constituents? Thanks, Barb. So um, if any of you know me, I have never said the word fraud since day one because you don't say fraud unless you can prove it. And you can't prove it just by doing an audit. Fraud is, is uh, intentional malfeasance, um, intentional actions. We can't prove that there were intentional actions that caused these problems. What we do know is that there were problems and they need to be fixed. It is up to the Attorney General's office to ensure that statutes are followed. That's his job, so therefore he can decide whether there is anything improper that needs to be investigated. Oh no, it's not a red flag. It's it's called we're doing an audit to the best of our abilities and when we have the other side. I mean, can you imagine if you were an auditor and you went in to go audit um, one of our uh, one of our agencies or a big corporation and they said we're only going to let you see these books over here. We're not going to let you see them over here. So an auditor can only do the audit on what they're available to see, and of course that audit is going to have a disclaimer on it that says, I did this to the best of my ability. It doesn't answer all the questions, but I can tell you what this leads me to, and I can tell you some suggestions about what it may or may not be, but it needs further investigation. That's the best we can do. But I'm not concerned, to be honest with you, I am not concerned that the fact that they said that there are different, uh, uh, <laughs> that there are different um, suggested suggestions as to why this may happen, because there always is until you can prove exactly what it is. Well, President Sam, if they're saying some of these concerns, some of these anomalies, they can't definitively say this is actually a problem, this is what went wrong. You've said problems that need fixing several times. Why are you comfortable moving forward legislatively to fix things that even your auditors can't affirmatively say are actually problems. Okay, so first of all, we do know that there was a number of our statutes that were broken. They were not followed. Chain of custody wasn't followed. We know that duplicate ballots were not identified the way they were supposed to be. We know that when the ballots actually came in, they were stuffed in boxes and not put in, in the way that they were indicated they should have been on the tally sheets. There is a whole list, as Mr. Bennett pointed out, there's a whole list of our statutes that were not followed. There is a number of election procedures that were not followed. So at the very least, we should be holding somebody accountable and saying, guys, we have laws in place just for this absolute reason. Next, right, next, Howard. You say the statute, you have election procedures manual, you have statutes, they're on the books. So what, so if folks aren't following, that's a different problem that you want to talk about well, what we're going to do is look at our laws to see if they're strong enough. That is, should we put some penalties in? If you do not follow the statutes, then you should be held accountable in one way or another. We know that there should be other um, requirements about just, just handling of the ballots alone. And the fact that there were so many adjudicated ballots, there were over 200,000 adjudicated ballots. That is over 11% of all of the ballots here in Maricopa County. The normal is over 1%. Why were there 10% more adjudicated ballots in this election? So you got to ask yourself that question. President Sam, let's talk about the county. You signed a document at the beginning of this promising the taxpayers of Maricopa County that you would pick up the bill if those voting machines were decertified. Any county cost. Instead, at the threat of $700 million of funding, 
you force them to waive that promise that you that made to the taxpayers of Maricopa County that the Senate would pay for replacing those machines if they couldn't be recertified. Okay, no, that's budget, incorrect, that's Bob. That's what the document no, says. No, that's it's not. Done. No, it said we indemn indemnify them if they were damaged. That is entirely different, so let's get this correct, okay? So, first of all, those machines were all fine going back there. The only reason they said that they were going to decertify them is because we have a Secretary of State who says, oh, I can't tell whether the auditors did anything to those machines. So, therefore, right. let me finish, please. So, therefore, she, um, she said, I don't know that I can do that. Now, my first question is, is if she can't get somebody t like pro v and or, uh, or uh, um, SLI, if she can't get them to certify the machines that they were not tampered with or that they were tampered with, then how do they certify the machines before election that they're not tampered with? You can't have it both ways. Second of all, we have statutes, once again, we have statutes in how you decertify the machine. Those statutes is, is the Secretary of State is supposed to give you 30 days notice and say, I'm thinking about decertifying these machines for this reason. And then there's a 30-day pe uh, period for people to respond to that. And then there is a 120-day period after that that we can go to court or we can argue um, before a judge as to why we think or don't think those machines will be uh, should but be certified. She do, she but she did not follow the rules. She did not decertify. She sent you a letter saying, I'm, I'm going to have to decertify. She started that process and said, the, gov the people of Maricopa <laughs> County are going to be on the hook for $3 no, million no, no, that no. you promised. Nope. So let's go back again, Bob. So here's the deal is, I know, he smiles. Um, as I said, she didn't follow the rules, number one, so I wouldn't have had to pay anyway. And besides that, we know for a fact ourselves that there is nothing wrong with those machines. This was nothing more than theatrics and politics in its worst. And there was no reason why the Maricopa County supervisors jumped on that other than to make another political statement. They jumped on it and ordered two more machines, which quite honestly the taxpayers never should have had to pay for, ever. And that's the truth of what the matter is here. Also, let's talk about very quickly, hold on to that, Dennis. One other thing, you brought up the deal about, um, about them holding back on that one. They came to us and said, we would like to offer a settlement deal. We would like to be able to do this, and we're going to take this off the table. That was their deal. I'm glad they did it, because they wouldn't have won in court anyway. Dennis, well, your you turn. Might, you might Dennis's turn. You turn. You Den Dennis's okay, turn. Dennis's turn. No, no, you are incorrect again. Um, the agreement, the settlement agreement, was to settle the 1487 issue. That's what that settlement agreement is. And even Supervisor Gallardo even said the reason why he voted against it, because he knew that if we didn't get the, the information that we were promised, yes, we can file another subpoena tomorrow. I hope to God we don't have to do that. I wish that the Maricopa County supervisors would just sit down with us Let's walk through this. Let's figure out what it is we're doing. If you remember, Mr. Richer, Stephen Richer, he ran for this recorder's job last November against Adrian Fontes. And he ran on the platform that he knew we had problems in the Maricopa County elections because of things the past recorder had done. We knew that. He knew that. That's what he ran on. Except so, for the fact that wait a minute, Howie, there. please don't interrupt me. Okay. Just a minute. So, he knew that. And so consequently, this is exactly what we're doing. Let's uncover whatever problems that may, or been, may have been there, that are there, that Mr. Richer, by his own acknowledgement, knew they were there. And let's, he should work with us to make that office better. Howie. Except for the fact that when Mr. Richer got in there and looked around and found out things were done according to Hoyle, in fact, if somebody was going to screw up the election, it would be Fontes who would find a way to get himself the election. Richard is among the people who say nothing is wrong. His people are on the phone to me today over and over again pointing out the flaws in what Doug Logan told you. So how can you say, well, Mr. Richard is, is, is on your side? Mr. Richard thinks that, that you guys have, have, you know, basically have, 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 have screwed the pooch. 
I did not. Uh, I did not say he was on our side. I was going to. I was saying that he should be on our side. So the reality is, is that if you don't do an audit, how did he even know that? I mean, did he look at all 2.1 million dollar ballots, to, uh, million ballots, um, to make sure that they were all b the ballots were handled correctly, that the duplicates were handled? Did he do that? No, he didn't. Uh, so how would he know that, Mary Jo? Speaking of audits, you've called for more audits. Um, who would do those? Would that be at taxpayer expense, or are you talking about a private or somewhat private effort, a quasi-private effort, as we saw here? So if you're referring to the comment that I made when I was on the diocese closing, is that I, um, what I said was that I believe that this is a lesson that we all learn, that we cannot just automatically assume that whoever the recorders are, are, are following the rules and following the statutes. We shouldn't just assume that anymore. Now, there are some amazing recorders out there, and the people that work um, at these facilities, facilities are amazing people. I do not want to take anything away from those. What I am saying, though, is mistakes are made. You know, sometimes we don't follow rules, and maybe they didn't realize it was a rule. Maybe they didn't realize it was important. But when, you, when people don't check up and make sure that everybody is doing what they're supposed to be doing, people get sloppy. Sometimes work gets sloppy. What, what's your full exercise? They do an immediate, hold on just a second, Bob. They do a minor audit, and that was part of the problem when this whole thing first started. I had called the supervisors and I said, um, you guys, you need to do a much bigger off, off, uh, audit instead of this minimum one here. Too many questions, too many problems. Do a much bigger one, and so let's get this put to bed immediately. Much bigger ones, but the yes, absolutely. Questions. Now, I'm not saying it has to be to this magnitude, um, but it certainly needs to be more than what we are doing right now, because obviously the voters aren't feeling comfortable that everything's being done. And we should check this. You know, we could do a better job of checking our vote, our ballots and our registration forms against Social Securities, against death certificates, you know, against. Uh, making sure that if we're sending out ballots that they're actually going to some place. You've heard me say, Mary Jo, that we have had reports, which I want the AG to investigate because that's his job, but we have had reports of people where a house in the East Valley received over 25 ballots to their address and only two people live there and, and they didn't know who the other people were. There is reports of over 75 ballots going to a vacant lot down in Tucson that was verified. When we looked at it, we said, oh, fraud, right, fraud? Actually, it wasn't fraud. But when we looked at it, apparently at one time, there was a homeless camp there, and people had their tents there, and they were getting their ballots sent to that. But unfortunately, the homeless camp apparently dispersed, the people were gone, and nobody notified the recorder that don't send the ballots to the vacant lot anymore. Those are the things that should be fixed, right? They shouldn't be. So you're next, sir. In the spirit of dispelling conspiracies, because you said this is about voter confidence and uh -huh. about this. Some of the other conspiracies, uh, yes or no, Chinese intervention, that they slipped in ballots. Can you say now today that did not happen? I can say that they did not find any of that, so I guess I can say that did not happen. Any big green button theory, 10,000 votes or more were not counted or switched because someone was asking was asked to press a green button more than once at the, at the ballot box. I, I know nothing about that. We didn't even have a conversation, so. Any big vote switching theory that tens of thousands of I, votes don't match paper ballots that would have ended up in the computer and then switched from Trump, I am, Trump to Biden. I'm not familiar with that Did accusation, that so. I, I'm not familiar with that accusation, so I'm, I'm not even going to comment on that one. How about the dead, dead people voting theory? I know you mentioned that, but you wanted to find out more about that. Uh -huh. Where do you stand today about the conspiracy oh, theory that dead people voted? Well, I don't think that's conspiracy theory because we do know that there are some ballots that have gone out. The report says, I don't know, you guys remember, 200 plus, 200 plus right? So, yeah, 254, something like that, that they identified. Um, now, they said the Potentially, yes, and we always say potentially, right? But until the, the until the attorney general gig, digs into this and can verify this stuff, I'm going to say potentially this is what we with this but, is what they found. Six million dollars, couldn't they have figured out whether there were actually 200 plus dead people that voted? I mean, that's something you wanted to know, and you don't have the answer today after six months. That is true because we could take another six months and keep doing all this, and I have no problem doing that. Personally, I'm kind of glad the audit is done at this part, but this is where the Attorney General is going to take over. He has access to a lot more uh, roles than we do. 
access to social security numbers, access to more de death certificate. I'm, you know, we as a legislative body, we gave him a substantial amount of money two or three years ago, Mary Beth, I don't, or Mary Jo, I don't remember, um, for him to open up an, an elections um, department to investigate these kind of things. That's why I want to turn it over to him. He's got the staff, he's got the money, I want him to do it. Um, they promised us we are still going to get all the data we need from the routers and the squunk logs. No, it's so it's not. No, it wasn't. It, it's not in there. We we did not do any canvassing. We didn't authorize anybody. No, yeah, let's get that very very clear. We promised the DOJ that we would uh, we would um, postpone any of that indefinitely, and we still have not done it. But, but, but we do know that Liz Harris and possibly some others, they did their own um, uh, canvassing, um, and I understand they not only did it in Maricopa County, but some other places. And um, I, have, I do not know her personally, but I have sent the word out there and said, I would love you to please turn that over to uh, the Attorney General's office and let him uh, back up or verify whatever it is. But Logan okay. said, in, said that he had incorporated some of Liz Harris's stuff in there, this unverified volunteer stuff. He said that that was incorporated into some of their findings. I don't believe he did. Why was it taken out? I don't believe yeah, he did. It was in the draft report. Did, did, did he suddenly un not use it? No. Well, first of all, that's why that's always an issue when you guys get a draft before a report because sometimes you get misinformation. What I'm saying is, is there is nothing of Liz Harris's in that report. We did not commission her, nor did Doug uh, Cyber Ninja, the auditor. They, she was not commissioned to do anything for us. No, no, she Logan, wasn't commissioned. The Department of Justice specifically warned you not to do that. Doug and Logan, we didn't do it, you, Doug Bob. Logan we did not do it. And put it in a report. That he used that information. Bob, we did that not seems use to it. Go directly against the Department of Justice Bob, directions to you. We did not use it. We have followed our promises to the DOJ. End of story. Okay, we're not going to argue about this. I can tell you what it is. Is, is there the anything point? else? Otherwise, I'm going to shut this down. Yes, Dennis. Okay, Dennis, that's a fair question. So let me tell you is that um, you heard all of the credentials of the people that presented today. So you can decide whether they're qualified or not um, and let the public decide whether they're qualified or not uh, other than maybe some of the spin that was put out there with all due respect. Now, to your other question, um, I think it showed the public that we do have some problems with our elections, that maybe the statutes aren't being followed, that we could do a better job we could do a better job of making sure that this is done. And quite honestly, you guys know from day one, I have always said, and I'll say it again, this was never about overturning. This was never about decertifying. This was all about, I, I'm, you're talking to me right now. You go, you talk to me, you talk to me. Um, you know, we have people and members that say things all the time. I'm not going to comment on theirs. What I can tell you is that um, uh, through all the reports, um, and there's a couple of you that are out here that I trust and know that you tried your best to, um, to be as impartial as possible, but we also know that from day one, you guys started calling it a sham audit and a fraudulent audit. Heck, our own Secretary of State put out a 100-plus page report um, a couple of weeks ago saying, don't trust the audit, don't trust the audit. Well, guess what? The numbers were pretty close. So what, you're not going to trust the audit when the numbers just came pretty close? All they're doing is pointing out, did we do the audit correctly? Do we have problems? Can we do better? So That's it. So End of story. I think we're done. I think, I think we're done. I have no regrets other than I wish we would have done this four years ago.
Thank you. I don't know.